This is the House of Hockey podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Hockey is more than a game, it's a lifestyle. It's you, the diehard supportive fans, your favorite players who are on the team you cheer for and the organization who supports them. The companies that make your gear, bags, and beer league sweaters, the hockey moms and hockey dads, and everything else that makes this House of Hockey your home. Come on in, I'm Breezy. And I'm Ray Ray. And And this this is is our house. house. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the House of Hockey podcast, episode 122. I'm one of your hosts, Breezy. And I'm your other host, Ray Ray. (laughs) And the season kicked off this past week. Have you uh, watched any games? I know you've been traveling. Yeah, I was actually in Tampa for the home opener, except Tampa was in new york for the uh excuse me the north american home opener because like officially the season right. started overseas in europe but uh yeah so i uh, watched uh the second period of that game and then i had no other time to watch games this week uh for, for i was busy working so did not have time to flip anything on but it's so great to have hockey back it really is. I my phone keeps blowing up with like plays and scores and stuff, and I'm like, this is kind of annoying, but I missed it, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I uh, took a special picture for all of you Lightning fans that we're going to post on our social media uh, since I was literally like across the street from Amelie Arena, uh, and I walked by it to go to this other work related thing I had to do. Um, so yeah. Got to awesome. see the uh, got to see the arena. I got to tell you though, Tampa is lightning proud. I mean, the amount of people with uh, lightning shirts on, lightning flags, uh, all across the town. I mean, they're you know, it's bolts bolts country. That's what they call it, right? Bolts Nation, maybe. Yeah, bolts, country? I, bolts Nation. I thought, isn't it? <laughs> yes. I don't know I what sounds so. better. <laughs> I think Bolts Nation. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Bolts Nation. Yeah. So lots of uh, humidity, lots of hair challenges. I got in super late last night. I'm really tired. So all of you who are watching on Stadium Scene TV, first of all, thanks for tuning in um, and apologies for the appearance. <laughs> so okay. yeah, you made it. You showed up. I d- I did. Yeah. Uh, Newsflash. We are now live streaming on Stadium Scene TV, which is available on YouTube, Twitch, and somewhere else. I think Facebook, maybe? Yes. Yeah. YouTube, Twitch, Facebook. (laughs) Yeah. So shout out out to our partners there. And uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. You can watch us live. Yeah. Well, should we jump into... uh what we got here yeah you All kick right, it off starting well we are heading to the east <laughs> we are uh going to talk about the eastern conference this week we've done two of uh two division a uh, two of four divisions so far so we've got the last two to cover this week and next and we're going to start with the atlantic division and we're going to start with the bruins who yeah. have made a few changes but for the most part their core roster is really the same there's no big moves coming out of them they've got a new head coach uh jim montgomery as we know bruce cassidy is now the head coach of the vegas golden knights and i think we can expect a lot of the same from them uh from last year yeah, and uh, one of their key players from a few years back, David Krejci, came back uh, where he left to go play in the Czech Republic to be closer with his family uh, last season. So they, I think they were just missing his overall presence last season. Uh, they obviously did well, but um, I think having him back uh, is really going to kind of tie the group back together again. For sure, for sure. I think we can expect... Uh some good action from the Bruins across this uh, season. And hopefully I can get my butt down to Boston and get to get to the garden to watch a game. (laughs) That's a goal this season for me. Yeah, you have to. 
I know. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's head. Go ahead. We'll we'll head to the Sabers. So, I don't think we can, you know, count the Sabers out this this season. I know everybody's giving a lot of eye rolls, probably, but let's not forget they have um, Owen Power, uh, the first overall pick uh, from the twenty twenty one draft. Uh, Ross Mustaline from 2018. They've got Jack Quinn, um, Dylan Cousins. And I think this year, maybe we'll start to see some of that young talent really start to perform on the ice, or at least I'm sure that's what Sabres fans are hoping will happen this season. <laughs> um, and that they'll, they'll have a little bit more. Here's a fun fact for you. They, um, had the youngest opening night roster in the NHL. They had an av- their average age was 25.58. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's pretty that young. Wild. So, I think that's gives hope I think to to Saber Sands and it's no longer uh all resting on the shoulders of Jack Eichel out there. Yeah. And when you have a guy like uh, Alex Tuck that comes in, who's a a Buffalo boy, who's obviously really proud to be there. I think having players that are going to be proud to be playing in Buffalo and for the Sabres, I think that's that's going to say a lot. And I think that's going to probably start to show through the season. That's right. I forgot about Tuck heading back there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Some good leadership that Kane was going to come back, but we're not talking about the Blackhawks. (laughs) let fly water off a duck's back (laughs) okay you take this next team because somebody really important and special to breezy is there my boy matthew kachuk went to the panthers we talked about that uh on episode 120 he signed an eight-year contract extension and he's he's making bank uh deserving uh and they obviously lost uh huberdo in is it mckenzie weger right yeah yeah also left um so the panthers are going to they lost a couple key players but then they gained kachuk um can he you know perform as well as the other two did um completely different dynamic obviously but I think it's going to be interesting to see how they do this season coming off of such a high last season. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we keep saying that with every team. I know we're probably sounding really repetitive, but (laughs) it's just so up in the air. And like, it's weird when, and what my, like, what I can't wrap my head around is when a player goes to a team and sign and they haven't played there but then they sign these like lengthy yeah extensions and it's like but how do you know you're gonna play well with with your line mates and in your and or for that that team for for all the things like you would think that they would want to get at least one season under their belt before signing a a long-term contract but there's probably more to it obviously than the way i'm looking at it but that's just my opinion yeah, that's a good point. I never really thought about that. That's a that's a lot of years to yeah. be with a team and the future and the prospect pool and like you the hopes that you like you said get along with your line mates. Uh, is it just for the money? Is this just the way that the trends of the game is going as far as like getting these guys when they reach that certain age and out of their entry year contracts. And then that like first year contract, and then they get to that second year. And it's like, if you don't sign that big number for that X amount of years, you might not get it is, you know, and if you have a team that's able to have the cap space to offer you that much money, do you just go, okay, or, or what, you know, but I think that's a gamble a lot of the players take, especially like a Kachuk in this situation where I guess, you know, he didn't really feel like he was going to have the opportunity to either one, get paid from his last team or two, uh, be able to have a chance to win a cup. Yeah, I think ultimately they're just chasing cups, right? Like I I think the money aspect is nice, but I think just chasing the cup is, is better. Um, but you need to look for, for your chances and maybe it comes down to stability 
too. You want to make sure that you're not going to be, you know, getting a house and then a year later, or two years later, having to look for a new one and going through that hassle. But um, it's just, it's so, it's so strange. It's so strange to me. It's an interesting life these guys lead for sure. But uh, as far as what Kachuk brings to that team, I think obviously he brings a lot as far as skill, but I think the energy he's going to bring to that yeah. room and Real that great energy, a different yeah. kind of like vibe too. The yeah. vibiest of the vibes. The vibiest of the vibes. He the is a smolderiest vibe. of the vibes. Whew. <laughs> Florida's going to get even hotter. <laughs> <laughs> it's so damn hot there. I don't know how people live there. Uh, I don't know how I lived there. I can say that because I lived there. Uh, so hot. Is it? So humid. I've never Crazy. been. I should have. You've never been to Florida? No. What? I, yeah. I've never been. Ever? No. You act like going to Florida is like a normal thing. Like it not is people, not a lot of people just go to Florida. It is. I guess maybe that's more of like the East Coast thing because like people always retire, like snowbirds, yeah. they all like so many people retire and go down to Florida. So it's yeah. like Florida or Arizona. You're yeah. you're just going to Arizona. <laughs> I'm just going to Arizona. Yeah. I mean, I saw when I was driving from uh where did I go? I flew to Atlanta. And I drove down to New Orleans. Uh, yeah. So I, I technically drove by the border. I saw like a little sign that said like Florida this way. <laughs> That's the closest I've been to Florida. I mean, it's it's just as humid as it is in New Orleans. But it was like, sidebar, everybody who doesn't care. I would blow dry my hair in the hotel room in the air conditioning. And it looked like perfect. Not a single fly away. All the volume. It was like ready for camera. I walked the five minute walk outside to where I was going and my hair looked completely different than it did when I left. Like that's, and I use like good hair products, whatever. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. That's funny. But when I was in New Orleans, it was December. So it was, oh. it was cold. So it was good. Yeah. Those are the, that's the time to be there. I'm going to be there in December too. I'm ex- this it was year. I'm awesome. very excited. Like that, yeah. like December gave you like a vibe in, in New Orleans because it was all like gloomy and it was like, this is sick. Oh, yeah. What did you do when you were there? Did you go on a ghost tour or anything? No, we were going to do a swamp tour. I, I really want to go do a swamp tour, uh, but I guess that's yeah. more of a Florida thing. Like, I feel like that'd be fun to do in Florida. Um, We just kind of like bar hopped. We didn't do anything really. It was so I I was with my friend who he basically invited me to his friend's 30th birthday party. So I knew nobody except for my friend. And I was in the house with like 15 people. So that was fun. Nice. That's a lot of people. (laughs) Especially for me not knowing anybody. And I am a very, very, very like. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, I love that city. I'm excited. I want to like make a bunch of dinner reservations like now so that I have them in (laughs) In place so I can try some of the new restaurants that have gone. Another place I've also lived, New Orleans, Florida. Yeah. Anyway. Go yeah. Okay. Corey. What? Go yes. Visit Corey. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and um Kevin. Oh, Kevin, so. thank you. All I can I remember people by their handles. I'm like 10 8 pop. Like yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh got a lot of people need to see down there. But uh okay, sorry, I digress. This week's episode of the House of Hockey podcast is brought to you by Hockey fans. It's finally time to hit the ice again. And thanks to DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you're in for the season of a lifetime. New customers can bet $5 on any team and get $200 in free bets if they win. If that wasn't enough excitement, you can turn small bets into bigger payouts with same game parlays. Combine multiple bets like which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more for your shot at an even bigger payout. 
DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. Bet $5 on any NHL team to win their game and get $200 in free bets if they do. That's code THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. The Canadians. Mm -hmm. A lot's happening. A lot's happening there. They've got a new head coach yeah. in none other than Marty St. Louis. Yeah. Who is very happy to be coaching. He uh, loves this game so much and feels like he, I couldn't find the quote. I had gotten a notification and it was something like, I don't have to do this job. I want to do this job or like I need to do this job. I yeah. don't know. It was some, something super aspirational that I couldn't quite repeat accurately back to you guys but uh what do you think he's gonna do for the for the team from a coaching perspective uh I think he's just gonna be more relatable and he's gonna be able to get to the players a little bit more um be able to maybe communicate better and just overall like speak better language as when it goes to like providing you know specific plays and making sure to not um I mean, I think they have a, I think the Canadians are definitely going through a little something, right? I mean, they obviously make it to the cup final and then they end up in like second to last place, whatever it is the following year. And then you have Carey Price, who's been going through his struggles and then like expected to come back. And then now maybe never coming back because yeah. of, you know, career ending issues uh, injuries so I, knee hip back yeah. i mean like Everything. every every bonus <laughs> poor guy you know yeah so i think i think that they just have a lot to get through and i think that having you know marty come in is going to um kind of be like a really good building block for them and, and start to give them some really good structure. And then we obviously have Kirby Doc that came. And I think that he's going to be, um, not only is he very, very tall, he's going to be <laughs> like a good, like standing structure for them as well. And, and a good guy to lean on to. I think so. And they've got um, Cole Caulfield there mm -hmm. and some young talent as well. And I think it's going to be good for, them to have doc and i mean they're gonna have to figure out the goaltending situation you've got i just lost hearing can you hear me i can hear you yeah oh my god my like something just happened i thought i like went deaf for a second <laughs> talk to me i'm here can you hear me oh my god that scared me oh boy <laughs> freaking airpods like it just sounded like it went it either like died or i lost my hearing and i just freaked out for a second anyway it probably just died i don't think you would just lose your hearing for three seconds and <laughs> come back. oh my god anyway the i think that it's probably not gonna be the best season of their of of what they could be this year i think this is the year for them to figure out what works what doesn't and what missing pieces they need uh, maybe a trade deadline and then also like from drafting and, and other things, because I, I don't think they have the, all the pieces put together quite yet. Right. Yeah. They're working on it. They're getting there. They're working on it. Yeah. Talk about uh, the next team on the list, which is another one of your teams. Yeah. I feel like, Leafs. wait, Leafs, you need to now, you need to have four. I've decided you need to have four teams. You need to have one team from each division. Okay. So you've got Central with the Preds, Pacific with the Kings, Atlantic. Where are we? Which one are we talking about? The Atlantic. I hate that they renamed them. Atlantic, you've got the metro. Leafs. You need a Metro team. All right. Uh, check but, back with me next week. I'll pick one. Yes. Pick <laughs> one by next week. Go. Got it. Okay. I can do that. Uh, the Leafs. Dang. Uh, they lose Campbell. And they gain Matt Murray and Matt Murray, obviously, uh, had a little owie, <laughs> a little owie, a little owie, 
Uh, and then I saw a headline yesterday that Campbell was actually, he's really mad at the Leafs and there there's a mutual like feud. I don't want to say feud, but I'm going to say feud because that's just a better word to, to say and who doesn't love a little drama um, between them. So they really relied on Campbell. Uh, he came in clutch last year uh, during a lot of games and uh, Matt Murray obviously is a great goaltender, uh, but I think I think Campbell still he obviously got a lot of uh hype and he's he signed a great contract over with the Oilers who I think are going to be a force to be reckoned with uh this season but that's a couple episodes back um so I still think that they're going to have some issues when it comes to you know goaltender um performance uh especially with matt murray i think that i mean if he's injured if he's got a, a little owie right now sometimes <laughs> goaltenders when they get hurt when they come back they're not they're not okay they come back too soon so the rock at the home opener kind of cool austin matthews is like i was just minding my own business and then yeah. there's the freaking rock <laughs> what yeah, so it weird. was uh, it was a little strange. I was like, "Why is he there? Is he can is he Canadian?" I think so, actually. Okay, maybe I don't know. I don't Literally. know. And then they're talking about Mitch Marner. I I haven't done. It's been I have I need to do my more research. But Mitch Marner potentially going to be a more of a defenseman kind of player. Yes, or in, that could be cool. That could be good. Yeah. Um, but that, that's Listen, not going to be the answer for anything. So they are committed to this team. Like the players they have, they are committed and they, they, they need to put Martyr on defense. They're going to do that. Cause like, they're not getting rid of them. Right. And if that's going to change the dynamic, like I think like management and like, they're stuck with what they have. Like they yeah. are convinced that that team is going mm -hmm. to win a Stanley cup. And so they're going to do all kinds of weird shit, like bring in the rock. I mean, whatever to get the boys hyped. I mean, I don't know how much that that impacted Austin Matthews by, you know. Yeah. But then you have, you know, Wayne Simmons, who's, who was, you know, presented to all 31 teams as being available. And it's like, you're, you're going to have a, a grit guy who you guys need on your team uh be potentially leaving he doesn't want to leave and i mean he he plays well for them but then they don't play him and it's like they obviously lost in the playoffs last season and they weren't playing simmons and i think that he needed to be in there and listen i'm not a coach i'm not a gm it, it is what it is i'm just stating my uh my side of the things but I don't think that they, they should be getting rid of Simmons and I hope that he stays. He wants to stay. And like you said, they're all committed. And I think as long as you have commitment to your team, you can play really well. Um, but they just got to get over their, their first round exits. <laughs> Where do the Leafs end up in the standings in their division at the end of the season? First, second, third. Or wild Where card? are they going to? Yeah. In the Atlantic, like at the end of the season, where will they where will they end up? Bold prediction, I'll say two. Wow. Okay. I was going with it. Two sounds like a great number. <laughs> Just making <laughs> shit up here, left and right. Yeah. You're welcome, folks, for the hard hitting analysis. That's why you <laughs> listen to us. I know. <laughs> um, uh, should we? Uh, is that all you had for the Leafs? Do you, Do you have any other thoughts and prayers you wish to send to them? I have a lot of thoughts and prayers, but we're going to, we're going to move on. <laughs> Let's head on up to Detroit, which I always forget that the Red Wings are there. I, that always just seems so off to me, but, uh, <clears throat> that they're not in the central, like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. It, it just seems weird to me, but the Red Wings not expected to make the playoffs. They're still in their figuring things out phase i know uh they're not quite performing as well as they would like to they've definitely made the necessary changes over the last couple of years of trying to add you know the grit the veteran people that they needed the pieces but it just quite ha hasn't sort of 
settled in. And then what is this note about this trade rumor happening with one yeah. of their core pieces? Yeah, I saw that there was a uh, a rumor that Larkin could be potentially moved at the trade deadline. That is, uh, I feel like it's kind of bogus, but listen, the talk is out there. So I figured I might as well put the note in there. He's a Michigan boy, though. I'm pretty yeah, sure he's from he's Michigan and like, captain. yeah, he's kind of the face. I mean, he, but sometimes you need to shake things up. And if it's shaking it up that much, maybe, I don't know. Would Larkin go to the Canadians and just crush it up there? Like, is that a better opportunity oh. for him? I don't know. I could see that boating well for him. Yeah. Yeah. All right keep the eyes on the rumor mill for that one let's talk <laughs> about the lightning uh based on what i saw in tampa on opening night when they were not playing at the time <laughs> uh i think i think they've got potential i don't think they win a cup i i sort of i don't know i don't want to say that i think that it's over but i still think that they've got a real quality team that is a force to be reckoned with. And I'm also just really happy that Steven Stamkos' son got to drive the Zamboni on the ice. And, you know, that I just love a full circle moment with a story like that. Yeah, absolutely. That was a good one. I saw the headline. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. You think they're going to be able to keep up and, and really make a good deep run? Listen, I'm think... the best goaltender in the league. I mean, yeah, obviously... he's also on my fantasy team, by the way. Um, right. So Rangers fans would disagree with us on that. But, you know, well, I also have Shashirkin on my uh, fantasy team as well. So I doubled down. Anywho, Breezy's um... winning. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, I think that they can keep up the pace, but I think they have a pretty big chip on their shoulder. I think that their ego could get in the way of things a bit. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. And what about the Sens? You think they're going to be hot I this think, season? I think they're going to do pretty well this season. And I I told you that like before we even started the first episode back. <laughs> and we're like, now we got to wait on this. And I'm like, how am I supposed to wait on this? I'm <laughs> print- <laughs> look at like their solid like lines right like they added where they needed to add um i think that they're gonna be okay hot this year yes but maybe is that a little too aggressive to say maybe i don't know um but i do think they're gonna i think that they can make the playoffs I think they they can if they can gel with all these new additions. I mean, they've got to bring it. Yeah. Drew, Talbot, uh, Kachuk, the other Kachuk. And it's just a matter of like coaching. Can they get the right uh, line mates? Can they get the right lines? What's their record so far? I don't know. I should have looked What's at this. What's the center's we record? I'm asking Siri for us. Oh, well, they're 0 and 2. So as of Sunday. But that doesn't mean anything. We we know well, the teams... are 0 and 2 right now. Well, I guess right. technically not. They're 2 and 2 because they technically started the season overseas, but right. they lost their last two games. But look at how the Preds performed overseas. Like they crushed it. And then listen, my famous quote someone's got to win and someone's got to <laughs> lose. And it's okay. It's the beginning of the season. I, th- I think yeah. they're going to come out of this pretty strong. Yeah. I don't know that they're going to do real well, but I think they'll at least figure out what they're doing by the halfway point of the season and whether yeah. or not those changes are working. Also, now the Kachuks are in the same division. So we're going to see a lot of Kachuk versus Kachuk. And I think a lot of uh, fun moments from the fam bam cheering them on uh yeah. in the stands too so be prepared for some of that now <laughs> yeah exciting for sure um all right that's it for the division i have two things uh on my list to discuss outside of 
the teams that I have, I have a uh, strong opinions on. And I think I've said it here before, but this week we saw on social media, a New York Islanders fan propose shirtless to the woman in his life. And she said, no. And it was this viral internet moment and a friend on social media. See, I just lost my hearing again. The AirPods like go out and I thought I. Uh, Maybe you just need to, to charge them up again. Mine they're, died, charged. they're charged. They're charged. Anyway, they <laughs> friend on social media said that the proposal was pl- a pre-planned no. So yeah. not only do I despise in arena proposals, I don't care what sport it is. I despise them. I think it is horrible to now this horrible thing is happening and we're pretending and we're saying no on purpose. I cannot, I cannot like this just like arenas should just say, no, we will not televise. We will not support you in your arena proposal. If you're going to do that. And that really means something to you, then like it is um, not happening on our jumbotron. If somebody yeah, proposed I... to me in an arena, they would, they don't know me. That is my worst nightmare. That's my worst nightmare. Like, my worst nightmare is being on the jumbotron. <laughs> I've been on the Jumbotron. It's not that bad. But to be proposed to. That's bad. I think these need to be banned. I think in arena game entertainment should be like not allowing this anymore. Kiss cam. Funny and great. Love it. All the other things we do. Terrific. Proposals. No. Hard stop to this. This listen, is ridiculous. Listen, we've seen too many movies where like people like do fake proposals to like get a rise out of someone or get a free meal or whatever. Some of these things when they're done in public like this, I'm like, I don't think that's real. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. How would you feel if someone proposed to you in an arena on the Jumbotron? Uh, I just said I was terrified of the Jumbotron. <laughs> I would say no and run. <laughs> I wouldn't even say no. I would just run. For sure. Yeah. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. Yeah, no, I'm good. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate that at all. Anyway, I'm sure there's like the very few people who, who would, but I think there's other better ways to do it, such as a friend of the pod and another social media friend, Molly, she's at Bender Butte. She just revealed that she got married at the Honda Center at the ticket window legally by the city of Anaheim. Like when COVID happened, they shut down like the courthouse or whatever or something. And so they were just letting people get married at the ticket windows because they could do it safely outside and the person was protected behind the glass and so so her and her husband got married at the ticket window at Honda Center and I was like okay I can get behind this this I can get behind but it's just weird that it's behind (laughs) that behind the ticket window the the like a court person was behind the ticket window they were outside well that's cool I like that but yeah, this seems like an odd place, like the ticket window. Yeah, but like odd, unique, not on the jumbotron. If no, you're a big hockey fan, and like and that's still your outside team. your favorite arena, right. which is cool. And not, you know, it still was like a private moment because there yeah. weren't, you know, tons of people around. She was like, "Yeah, they just ha- like emailed you, like what ticket window to go to <laughs> and do it." And I was like. I, first of all, how did I not know that happened? Oh, right. COVID middle of a pandemic where like everything is crazy. Um, and I was like, send me all the pictures. I want to see this. I just thought it was like such a unique thing and a much better way to incorporate proposal marriage situation. That is pretty cool. In a I, unique... I was like, yeah, confused by this whole like ticket window thing. Like, it's like you walk up and just like, like, obviously, it was pre-planned. Like, you don't just, like, walk yeah. up and be like, hey, I'm going to get married. But 
No, you like Pretty hand cool. your marriage license through the little slide thing under the glass and then they check it over and then they slide it back and you sign it. And then because you can speak through the glass, they're like, do you, Aunt Molly, take so-and-so, you know, and they got married there. That's pretty cool. I'm uh, that's, that's interesting. Way more interesting than a jumbotron proposal. Why didn't that like make it like more known? I know that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't see any coverage of like unique ways of people getting married during the middle of the pandemic, starting with tickets, ticket windows at the Honda Center. That's coming up after the break. You know, like where was that story? If we missed it, apparently, or just it wasn't <laughs> there. It wasn't. It was never there. Clearly. But now, but it's here now, so that's cool. Yeah, this freaking AirPod just keeps going in and out, and I keep losing hearing what you're saying. Sorry, it's not your fault. Okay, <laughs> it's mine. I just threw it. I just threw it down. Did you see me throw it out of my ear like a newscaster whose producer is talking to her in her IFB, and she's so mad, and she just whips it out of her ear. <laughs> I don't think I pay attention to those things. Okay. I should just stop talking. <laughs> those are my thoughts. Oh, and Blackhawks got a W. I woke up to a W this morning, our first W of the season. Go team. Go team. That's awesome. I I really don't have much uh much to say this week. I don't I'll bring more next week, along with uh an or a metro team that I'm gonna start cheering for. You got homework, girl. You got homework. You got to round it out. You got to round it out. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you don't have to, but if you were gonna, I'd like to have a potential team on the table. Yeah, I probably should have another team. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.